Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who's here with us today. And for those who listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. It is Saturday, September 3rd, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And on the Hebrew calendar, the the year 5782 it is the month of alul and it is the seventh day and this is the day that the lord has made we will be glad and rejoice in it I'm going to go over a couple messages we have for the upcoming week well today of course uh is the first shabbat for the month for the month of september that is and we always do um holy communion on the first Shabbat of of the month. Also, uh, we do Holy Communion as we're bringing in a new Hebrew calendar month as well. Uh, So today we're gonna have Holy Communion. And also in the upcoming week, we are continuing with our Bible study and we are going to be reading from 2 Chronicles. We are going to be doing chapters one through 12. And currently, we're using the English Standard Version of the Bible. And also on Tuesday evenings, we meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel. We welcome everyone who would like to join us. You can join by phone or you can join by web. Um, And that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. I post announcements to four social media platforms. So all you need to do is there's there's links actually within the post. Um, the first link is to the phone drop down list, and I just want to draw your attention to uh, it says it says toll calls for every single country, including the United States. That is not correct. This is actually our free list that was given to us, and I can assure you none of us has paid anything that has come on the conference call. So this is the free list, and we've also had people from other nations actually test it out before as well, and they they did not pay. Actually, someone from India was in um, before so I know that this is indeed the free list. How to ensure that it is free? You would dial your in-country number, wait for the prompt to add then the access code. And the access code is the same for every for everyone. It doesn't matter what nation that you reside in. So, and, and don't forget to uh, enter the number sign and it'll bring you right into the conference. If you want to test it out before Tuesday evening, feel free to do so. Uh, what you're going to encounter is it will, it will say the host is not yet joined. Or, well, it'll ask you if you're the host um, and then it will proceed to play music. Um, now, if you want to join by web, uh, you would click on to the link, um, to the, the second link. Uh, you would download either the web or the phone app, and both of them are safe. I have had freeconferencecall.com on my computer for many years, actually. So it is very safe. Uh, we use this for college courses um, in the past, so um, I can tell you it is safe. So. What you would do is you would download whichever you choose, the web or the phone um, app, and then go ahead and run the exact, like you would any other application that you would download, and then follow the prompts into the conference area. And you'll find that there's a built-in microphone, there's a built-in camera, and there's a built-in chat area. So it's it's fully equipped as a conference uh, room. So with that being said, we use this platform for teaching. We run classes as well. Um, And also uh, we use it for fellowship, for prayer, for lifting one another up in prayer. Also for prayer requests that are brought to us. Uh, We join in corporate prayer for for those prayer requests. And also we have hosted in the past musicians, uh, writers. So if that is something that interests you, if you you have a different kind of ministry, you have an event, you have 
a book that you've recently published, a uh, music CD that you, you recently released or, or are releasing that you want to promote, uh, we'd be glad to host you. Um, we're all part of the body of Messiah, so if we can help you, we'd, we'd certainly be glad to host you for, for any of that. You would just have to reach out to me and we'll work something out. And there is the ability to do MP3 and MP4 recordings. I have done them for those we have hosted in the past. And then after after uh, the presentation, uh, I would finalize the MP3 and MP4. And then, then I'd email uh, the individual that copy so they can take it and use it however you want to use it. But it's our ministry's way of tithing into your ministry. Uh, we are to work together. We're not in competition with anyone. Um, so if you've got something that you'd like to promote that that by all means, uh, we'd love to host you and, and help you out with whatever's coming up for your particular ministry. We're all working for, for the kingdom of heaven. So the the big deal is getting the the gospel out to all to all areas of the world and taking as many souls as we can with us so by all means you can certainly reach out to me that is really all the announcements that i have for this week so we're going to continue on and begin shabbat service with our opening prayer and invite the holy spirit in to lead us and guide us Avina Mokino, our Father, our King, we thank you for today. We thank you for every day that you put breath into our lungs. We wouldn't be here without your breath that was placed into our lungs in the first place. You are the lifter of our heads. You are the giver of life, and we thank you. We thank you for this day that you sanctified as holy, for as a wonderful Father, an amazing father that you are. You sh you set that example for us right from the beginning. When you created everything, you worked in six days and you rested on the seventh, thus showing us what it is that you want us to do, to work six days and rest on the seventh. And Saturday is our seventh day. This is the Sabbath. This is Shabbat. This is the day that you sanctified as being holy. No other day in the week for Shabbat. We thank you, Father, that you gave us that example. And we're here to honor that example that you have given to us. Father God, we thank you so much. And we ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to your word in everything it is that you want us to grasp from this week's Shabbat service so that we can be good stewards of your word and that we can walk with you in uprightness. We love you, Father God. We give you all the honor. We give you the glory and we give you all of our praise in the mighty, majestic, amazing, powerful name, the name above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, we pray this. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8. Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai, your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. The Lord's greatest commandment, say with me now, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Mahuto, Leolam, Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words, which I am commanding you today, are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the second greatest commandment, Yeshua said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he also said the entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings. The first blessings, the first blessing is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God. And God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants. For the sake of his name and love, King Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, Adonai, Shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might? And who can compare with you, O king, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish, you are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is holiness, Kedusha. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow and worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor, O God, in your great love. Answer me with the truth of your salvation. And it's Cain, the tree of life declaration. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. And we say this of the Torah. Its ways are pleasantness, and it's and all of its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old, Bayam Hafu in that day. And it is said Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Akkad, and his name Akkad. And the word Akkad, E-C-H-A-D, means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified. Amen. In the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer. Amen. In your lifetime and in your days and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel. Speedily and soon and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded. Be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation, spoken in the world and say amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us, and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Etan Adonai Eloheinu, Malak HaOlam, Asher Netan Lanu Devar HaKayim, Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now Messiah's prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather Benaiah Israel to worship. And we're going to sound the shofar now to call us to worship. I am going to pause it now for you to go listen to some praise and worship songs. Um, as always, I do not uh, include it in the recording. Uh, we just never did. At a time when we started doing the recordings, um, we couldn't. We weren't able to do that, and there was always the risk of having problems on social media and YouTube and all the places that we post to. So uh, we just never did it, um, and. I know there's some people that that will do it with a disclaimer. What I have been doing, um, and and actually there's a plus side to this, and I'll get into that just in a moment. What I've been doing when I post to the social media platforms, and I post to USA dot life, uh, USA life dot com. I'm sorry, I post to uh, MeWe, I post to Gab, and I post to Facebook. When I post to these, I usually post a series of songs, and then I'll post uh, Shabbat part one and two, and then another series of songs. So the first series of songs you can actually use for part one, and of course the second for part two. And of course, if you have your own praise and worship songs that you prefer to listen to, that's fine. I just want to indicate that because we don't incorporate it, you know, that uh, we still do praise and worship. Praise and worship is probably one of the most important elements of a service. And absolutely, uh, we do praise and worship. So this is why when I pause it, I, I want you to also uh, take some time and, and do praise and worship. We are created beings to praise and worship our creator. So it is so important. Uh, for us to do that. Praise and worship does so many things. It also takes your distractions away and gets you focused on, on the Lord uh, because you're singing to the Lord. You're singing about the Lord and um, giving him all your praise is something that uh, we are to do. So um, the nice thing about the, there's a positive end to the way we're, we're doing this. Um, you can link right onto the artist's um, YouTube channel and familiarize yourself with that artist. And, and a lot of the artists um, have other links that you can click onto to actually buy their music. So by all means, support what they do. Uh, so, so this is a plus side to doing it how we do it. So you can actually get familiar with these, these very talented artists. Um, they give us such anointing and anointed music. So by all means, um, fam familiarize yourself with other things that they do as well and support what they do. And with that being said, I'm going to pause it and then we're going to come back and begin our tour portion for this week and our half tour portion for this week. Then we will close out part one, take a short break. Uh, and then then you can come back with uh, we'll come back with part two of Shabbat service for this week. And in that uh, will include um, the Brit Kadesha scriptures, as well as an altar call, Holy Communion and then closing Shabbat for the week. OK, I'm going to pause it now. We'll come back and begin the Torah portion. This week's parasha is Parashat Shaftim. Uh, and that translates into the word judges. And the Torah portion this week is Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18 to 
chapter 21, verse 9. Parashat Shaftim, or judges. Judges are appointed. Judges and officers you are to appoint within all your gates that Adonai your God is giving you according to your tribes, and they are to judge the people with righteous judgment. See this, is, and listen to this, and think about how things are done modern day. Whoa, I think they have a lot to answer to God for. You are not to twist justice. You must not show partiality or take a bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and distorts the words of the righteous. Justice, justice you must pursue so that you may live and possess the land that Adonai your God is giving you. You are not to plant for yourself an Asherah pole of any kind of wood besides the altar of Adonai your God that you make for yourself, nor are you to set up a pillar for yourself. Adonai, your God, hates this. So no statues made to honor yourself, so that becomes an idol. Again, idolatry, I-D-O-L-A-T-R-Y, uh, is an abomination of God in all forms. We don't worship people. We don't worship ourselves. We don't worship money. So this is also being addressed here and not setting up Asherah poles. And the Asherah poles were, were, were done by like the pagan, the, the pagan religions that the, the people were surrounded, the people of God were surrounded by. And as they were going into the land, this is what these people were practicing. They were practicing religions and, and worshiping false gods and doing all kinds of wild and wacky things and God did not want his people to be participating in this. This is just uh, just like us. We are not to participate in the abominations of what the world does. We are to stick to what God wants for us. And if you're not sure, take it to the Lord in prayer. Wait for discernment on decisions that you make. Don't just jump into the way of the world. So we need to separate ourselves from what the world is doing. Just because everybody in the world is doing something doesn't mean it's right. And it's what God wants for us. And I'd rather be right with God and wrong with the world. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Chapter 17, Investigations and Witnesses. This is how he set up the righteous justice system. You are not to sacrifice to Adonai, your God, a bull or a sheep that has a defect or anything bad, for that would be an abomination to Adonai, your God, because you're not giving him the best. You know, you're not honoring him. It's like, okay, this is no good, so we'll just do this. We'll just give this away. So that's not, that's not, doing, you, you, you certainly want, you know, we're, we're to love the Lord with all our heart, all our strength, all our mind. And to do something like that would be like, okay, you know, this is second best and God is first in all of our lives. So we want to honor him with our best as well. Suppose there is found in your midst within one of your gates that Adonai your God is giving you, a man or a woman who does what is evil in the eyes of Adonai your God by transgressing his covenant. This person goes and serves other gods and worships them, the sun or moon. We're not supposed to be worshiping the, the, the galaxies and, and there are people that worship the sun. Okay, we've had, I mean, back in ancient Egypt, Ra, this the sun god continued to be worshipped by the Romans. I mean, all of them were worshiping the sun, the moon, you know, all of that stuff. We do Rosh Kadesh service, but that's an appointed time. We do not worship the moon. Just want to make that uh, known. Uh, we do not worship the galaxies. Um, god created them for signs and seasons. Um, the sun, the moon, the stars, and uh, 
and, and they're magnificent, but it's God who created them. Okay. We do not worship creation. We worship the creator. Okay. This person goes and serves other gods and worships them, the sun or moon or any of the heavenly host, which I have not commanded. It is told to you and you have heard about it and you investigate thoroughly. And indeed it is true. And the thing certain this abomination has been done in Israel, then you are to bring out to your gates that man or woman who has done this evil thing and stone that man or woman with stones to death. Now we don't, of course, do that um, today. Uh, this was pretty, pretty harsh, but he was teaching them. Uh, it was a foundation that was being given to them um, at this point by the word or uh, by, the, by the word of two or three witnesses. Okay, this is the judicial system. You, by one person's word against the other, no, you cannot do that. The one who is to die is to be put to death. No one is to be put to death by the word of one witness. And there's reason for that, you know, that one person might actually hate that other person and want them out of the way for whatever vindictive reason. So you cannot take one person's word over the other. There has to be witnesses or you do not, it's not, it, it cannot be fairly tried. The hand of the witnesses is, is to be First, to put him to death, and afterward, the hand of all the all the people. So you are to purge the evil from your midst. Suppose a matter arises that is too hard for you to judge over bloodshed, legal claims, or assault, matters of controversy within your gates. Then you should go up to the place Adonai your God chooses, and come to the Levitical Kohanim and the judges and the judge in charge at that time, and you will inquire, and they will tell you the sentence of judgment. You are to act according to the sentence that they tell you that place Adonai chooses, and take care to do all that they instruct you. You are to act according to the instruction they teach you, and the judgment they tell you. You must not turn aside from the sentence they tell you to the right or to the left. The man who acts presumptuously by not listening to the Kohen who stands to serve there before Adonai your God or to judge or to the judge, that man must die. So you are to purge the evil from Israel. Then all the people will hear and be afraid and not act presumptuously again. Torah for kings. When you come to the land that Adonai your God is giving you, possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like all the nations around me, you will indeed set over yourselves a king whom Adonai, your God, chooses. So he's already telling them at this point, they do not have a king. They the, Moses is still leading them. And then we know um, who Moses' successor is. So that will be Joshua. Um, but then there will be judges also that follow, as we read in our Bible study. But then there came a time when Israel wanted to be like the rest of the nations, and it actually grieved God's heart. Uh, they wanted to have a king placed over them. And Samuel spoke war spoke to the people. He warned them, uh, but yet um, God said he would give them what they wanted. And this is the first king, as we know, was King Saul. And then King David followed after that. One from among your brothers will be appointed as king over you. Now we know King Saul came from the tribe of Benjamin and King David was from the tribe of Judah. You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he should not multiply horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to multiply horses because Adonai has said to you, you must never go back that way again. Nor should he multiply wise for himself so that his heart does not turn aside nor multiply much silver and gold for himself. Now, 
spoiler alert, when we look to the reign of King Solomon, he had 700 wives and concubines. So, and they actually did turn his heart away from Adonai. He, he also joined in the pagan ceremonies of his wives. So that was not a good thing. So he's, all, you know, Adonai's warning the people before they even go into the promised land. But he already knows, you know, he already knows what they're going to do. Now, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself a copy of the Torah on a scroll from what is before the Levitical Kohanim. It will remain with him and he will read in it all the days of his life in order to learn to fear Adonai his God and keep all the words of this Torah and these statutes. Then his heart will not be exalted above his brothers and he will not turn from the commandment to the right or to the left so that he may prolong his days in his kingship he and his sons in the midst of Israel. Now, as far as the Torah goes, <clears throat> the scrolls actually, actually Moses wrote most of the first five books of the Bible, which is the Torah. And of course, before Deuteronomy is over, this is a spoiler alert, Moses will die and Joshua will be the successor. And Joshua is the one that finishes the book of Deuteronomy, the very end of it. Okay, chapter 18, the Levitical Kohanim, all the tribe of, of Levi are to have no portion or inheritance with Israel. They are to eat the offerings made to Adonai by fire. As his inheritance, they will have no inheritance among their brothers. Adonai is their inheritance, just as he promised them. So this will be their share due to the Kohanim from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, whether a bull or a sheep, they are to give the Kohan the shoulder, two cheeks and the stomach, the first fruits of your grain, of your new wine, of your oil, and the first fleece of your sheep you are to give him. For Adonai your God has chosen him from all your tribes to stand and serve in the name of Adonai, him and his sons forever. Suppose a Levite comes from one of your towns, wherever he is living in all of Israel, and he comes whenever his soul desires to the place that Adonai chooses and serves in the name of Adonai his God, like all his fellows, like all his fellow Levites who stand there before Adonai, they are to eat equal portions regardless of their father's goods. Now, the next thing that is being addressed is occultism is loathsome to Adonai. When you enter the land your God is giving you, you are not to learn to do the abominations of those nations. There must not be found among you anyone who makes a son or daughter pass through the fire or a fortune teller, soothsayer, omen, reader, or sorcerer, or one who casts spells, or a medium, a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead to no seances. For whoever does these things is an abomination to Adonai. And because of these abominations, Adonai, your God, is driving them out from before you. You are to be blameless before Adonai, your God, for these nations which you are about to dispossess. Listen to soothsayers and fortune tellers. But as for you, Adonai, your God, will not allow you to do so. Now, I just want to mention, Adonai is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That has not changed to this day. I don't care if somebody's going to say, well, that was the Old Testament. No, that is, the, the, it was also repeated in the New Testament. Adonai is not going to change his mind. If it was loathsome and an abomination to him then, it is loathsome and an abomination to him now. A prophet is promised. Adonai, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst. Now, this is Moses still addressing the people. From your brothers, to him you must listen. This is just what you asked of Adonai, your God, in Horeb on the day of the assembly, when saying, I cannot continue to hear the voice of Adonai, my God, or see this great fire anymore, or I will die. Adonai said to me, they've done well. 
in what they have spoken, I will raise up a prophet like you for them from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. Now, whoever does not listen to my words that this prophet speaks in my name, I myself will, will call him to account. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet will die. Now, should you say in your heart, how would we recognize the word that Adonai has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in Adonai's name and the word does not happen or come true, that is a word that Adonai has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. Now, I just want to mention there are prophecies by some of the Old Testament, the the old you know the Old Testament prophets that have still to be fulfilled with the second coming of Yeshua. Now Isaiah died before the first coming of Yeshua, but he did prophesy correctly and pinpointed Yeshua to such detail. Chapter 19, Cities of Refuge, when Adonai your God cuts off the nations whose land Adonai your God is giving you, and you dispossess them and dwell in their cities and houses, you are to set apart three cities for yourself within the land he is giving you to possess. You are to prepare the way for yourself and divide into three parts the borders of your land that Adonai your God enables you to inherit, so that anyone who kills may flee there. Now, this is the case of the one who kills, who may flee there and live, whoever kills his neighbor unintentionally. So this is not premeditated murder. This is an accidental. And did not hate him in the past. As when someone goes into the forest with his neighbor to chop wood, and his hand takes a swing with the axe to cut down the tree, and the iron flies off the wood and hits his neighbor so that he dies. He may flee to the to one of these cities and live. Otherwise, if the way is long, the avenger of blood, while his heart is hot, may chase the manslayer, catch up to him and strike him dead. Yet no death sentence is on him since he did not hate him in the past. Therefore, I am commanding you set apart three cities for yourself. Suppose Adonai, your God, enlarges your territory as he has sworn to your fathers and he gives you all the land that he has promised to give to your fathers when you take care to do all this mitzvah that I am commanding you today to love Adonai your God and to always walk in his ways they are to add three more cities for yourself besides these three then innocent blood will not be shed within your land that Adonai your God is giving you as an inheritance, and there would be blood upon you. But suppose someone hates his neighbor, waits in hiding for him, rises up against him, strikes him dead, then flees to one of these cities, then the elders of his hometown should send and take him from there and hand him over to the avenger of blood to die. Your eyes should not pity him, but you must purge the innocent blood from Israel so that it may go well with you. You must not move your neighbor's boundary marker that the first generations mark out in the inheritance you will receive in the land Adonai, your God is possessing you to possess. In other words, you can't um, move land markers to increase your land. And that that's done time and time again. You can't squat on somebody's land. Uh, it doesn't belong to you. A single witness shall not rise up against a person for any offense of or sin that he commits. By the word of two or three witnesses is a case to be established. Suppose a hostile witness rises up against someone to accuse him of wrongdoing. Then both people who have the dispute will stand before Adonai, before the Kohanim, and judges in charge at that time. The judges are to investigate thoroughly. And if indeed the, the witness is a false witness, and has testified falsely against his brother, then you are to do to him just as he had plotted to do to his brother. So you will purge the evil from your midst. 
Those who remain will hear and be afraid, and they will no longer do such an evil thing as this is as this in your midst. Your eye must not show pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Chapter 20, Confidence in Battle. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see a horse and chariot, a people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For Adonai, your God, the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt, is with you. When you draw near to the battle, the Kohen will come forward and speak to the people. He will say to them here, O Israel, you are drawing near today to the battle against your enemies. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't fear or panic or tremble because of them. For Adonai, your God, is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The officers are to speak to the troops, saying, What man has built a new house but has not dedicated it? Let him go back to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle, and another, another man would dedicate it. What man has planted a vineyard but has not put it to use? Let him go back to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle, and another man would begin to use it. What man has become engaged to a woman but has not married her? Let him go back to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle, and, and another man would marry her. The officers will speak further to the troops and say, What man is afraid and faint-hearted? Let him go back to his house, so he does not weaken his brother's heart like his own. Then, when the officers have finished speaking to the troops, they should appoint army commanders at the head of the troops. When you go near a city to fight against it, call out Shalom to it. Now, if it answers you Shalom and opens up to you, then all the people found in it will serve you as forced laborers. If it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then lay siege against that city. When Adonai your God hands it over to you, you are to strike all its males with a sword, only the women, children, livestock, and all that is in the city, all its spoil, may you take as plunder for yourself, so you may consume your enemy's spoil, which Adonai your God has given you. Thus you will do to all the cities that are very distant from you, which are not among the towns of these nations nearby. However, only from the cities of these peoples, which Adonai your God has given you as an inheritance, you must not let anything that breathes lives live. You must utterly destroy them, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, just as Adonai your God has commanded you. You are to do this so they will not teach you to do all the abominations as they have got done for their gods. And so you would sin against Adonai your God. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, making war against it to capture it, you are not to destroy its trees by swinging an axe at them. For them, for from them you may eat, so you shall not chop them down. For is the tree of the field human, that it should enter the siege before you? You may destroy and chop down only the trees that you know are not trees for food, so that you may build siege equipment against the city that is making war with you until its downfall. And that is the end of the Torah portion for this week. So last week, just as a recap, uh, Parashat Ra'e, we read that Moses told the, the, the children of Israel that Adonai had said a blessing and a curse before them. The blessing would come when they obeyed God's commandments and the curse if they forsook them. So this week, Parashat Shoftim, or Judges, opens with a biblical concept of judges, righteous judgment and justice. The very first word of the parashat reading is Shoftim Judges, which derives from the word Shafat, and that's S-H-A-F-A-T, to judge or to govern. To emphasize the theme of justice, the Hebrew word Tzedek, which is justice, is repeated twice in verse 20. Um, Hebrew, in Hebrew, justice is closely tied to the idea of righteousness and holiness. In fact, the words righteous and charity are related to justice. It only follows then that God, who is holy and righteous, is also just. He is called the Lord of Righteousness, Zikenu, and the Righteous God, Elohim, Zedek, and a Righteous Judge, Shofat, Zedek. 
And the prophet Isaiah, which we're going to be reading in the half Torah portion, um, declared, he, he actually declared in, in an earlier reading, but the Lord Almighty will be exalted by his justice, and the Holy God will show himself holy by his righteousness. Justice is the foundation of the Torah's humane legislation. God also requires that Israel be characterized by righteousness, integrity, and charity. And Proverbs 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Well, isn't that true? We can certainly see that in our world today. And we need more, we need, we need to raise up some righteous leaders for sure. When there is no justice, there is no appreciation of the right of every human being to be treated with fairness, respect, and kindness. Those who oppress, mistreat, or take advantage of others, especially orphans, widows, and strangers, are the enemies of God and man. What is the end result of justice and righteousness? Peace and security. Shalom and security. The fruits of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. And that's in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. We can see why it's so important that everyone in a position of authority needs to be righteous and just, including our government leaders and officials, bosses, teachers, and even fathers and mothers. And in our world today, um, <laughs> We're really lacking that in, in our governmental leadership, um, which is very sad. And it does trickle down to local and, and what have you. So that needs to change. A kingly model of justice. In his farewell message to the nation of Israel, Moses addressed the subject of authority. He prophesied that Israel would ask for a king to rule over them in the promised land. And he was right. Um, as we know, um, for those that are following what the Bible study, uh, we have gone through kings, many kings, um, but King Saul was the first one that was, that was chosen. Also, as Moses predicted, after almost four centuries in the land, the people of Israel demanded a king. Both God and Samuel the prophet were displeased with the request regarding it as a rejection of the reign of God over Israel. And actually, actually, Adonai said to Samuel, it's not you they're rejecting, because Samuel was kind of, he was besides himself uh, when this was asked, when this was demanded. Um, and actually, First Samuel chapter eight, verse seven says, listen to the voice of the people according to all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you. They have rejected me from reigning over them because Adonai was their king at that point. But they were asking for an earthly king, just like the rest of, they wanted to be like the rest of the nations. The problem wasn't that Israel wanted a king. Moses had prophesied that they would have a king over them in the land. It was the way they asked and the motivation behind the request. They told Samuel, now appoint a king to lead us such as all the other nations have. And that was stated in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. God never intended for Israel to be ruled by a king like the ones found in the pagan nations. The king of Israel was to be a model of justice and righteousness, an example for the rest of the nations to follow. Yeshua is a model of servant leadership. The ideal Jewish king or leader is unique among the nations. He's a servant leader that is scholarly, pious, righteous, and God-fearing. He's someone who encourages the people to fulfill their mission to be a light to the nations and Yeshua Jesus perfectly modeled servant leadership he also trained his disciples in this style of leadership and in Matthew chapter 20 verses 25 to 28 it says you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. You, 
you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yeshua is the eternal King of Israel who rules and reigns on the throne of David and righteous judgment and justice. When Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah, he wrote that a child would be born, a son given, and the government would be upon his shoulders. Of the increase of his government and shalom, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. And that was prophesied. As I mentioned earlier, um, Isaiah prophesied. Yeshua's first and second coming. And this was taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. And in all our leadership roles, we are to follow his example of ruling or governing. The Hebrew language itself also reveals that God intends those in positions of authority to be examples for others to emulate. Can we look to our leaders today and want to follow their example? I think not. Um, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, and I don't think Adonai wants us to follow them either uh, because they're not doing what is right and just and and righteous at all. They're doing wicked things, actually, that goes against Adonai. So we do not. But, and, but then again, they're part of the world system. So we need to be careful. Careful who you follow. Careful who you listen to. Does it line up with what Adonai wants for us? If it does not then we need to be really careful and not follow it. For instance, the Hebrew word for government is memshala, which is related to the word mashal, to rule or govern. Mashal comes from the Hebrew word M-S-H-L, meaning to be like or to compare and therefore carries the connotation of example. When Yeshua washed his disciples' feet, he showed us a beautiful example of how we should both serve and lead others. And in John chapter 13, verses 14 to 15, he said, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you, should, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. A leader must possess a combination of strength and humility, he must be able to get the job done without bullying. Okay, so the, look at our leadership today. Can they do that without bullying? No. A leader must possess, a good leader, a combination of strength and humility. He must be able to get the job done without bullying and to exercise compassion without belittling. King David was also an example of righteous authority. David was God's anointed one, a type of Messiah. In Hebrew, the word Messiah is Mashiach, which means anointed one. And then I set David on the throne when he removed Saul as king of Israel because of his disobedience. And God chose David because he was a man after his heart who would rule Israel with righteousness and justice. That's not to say that David was a perfect man. As we all know, he took another man's wife, Bathsheba, and then positioned her husband, Uriah, to be killed in battle. We'll talk about that as we, when we get into um, preparing for communion. Despite this sin, David was also a God-fearing, humble man, and he did repent of this terrible transgression when Nathan the prophet confronted him. This quality is essential to righteous authority, a willingness to listen to a godly rebuke and to repent and turn back to God. What we have in leadership today is they think that uh, actually they they actually to have turned from God. We need to pray for our leadership that it turns back to God. That uh, Many think they're their own gods, which is why we have the problems that we have today. They don't fear the God that created them, the God, the only God that there is. They think that they're the God and they can make all these crazy notions uh, that go against God. The gold standard of leadership, Parashat Shoftim, details the appropriate behavior of a king of Israel. The king wasn't to gather for himself um, a bevy of beauties or piles of money. Indeed, he was to treasure the book of the law 
Torah and diligently read it. He was to fear the Lord and keep his laws and statutes. And if today, 3,000 years later, the Bible still guides leaders in wise decisions. So yes, we don't throw out the Old Testament because some of the principles here that are given in the Old Testament ring true today. We need righteous leaders, fair, just leaders. We absolutely need them. We're lacking them. That's the problem. A little tidbit here. Um, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu had revived a weekly Bible study se session in his official residence for national and religious leaders, a practice initially started um, by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion. Um, and, and we should pray for those in leadership roles that they come back, they repent, turn back and come back to God. We need to pray that our government leaders and those in authority uh, are wise, just, and righteous so that we may live in shalom. And if they're not, for Adonai to remove them. People in positions of power make mistakes that can have devastating consequences on the people they govern. In the book of Exodus, we see a perfect example of this in Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt. He harmed his people um, by his stubbornness. All the Egyptians, even innocent men, women, and children, suffered because of the hardness and stubbornness of Pharaoh's heart. Although people in positions of leadership and authority often have more privileges than the common man, they also carry greater responsibility. And the greater a person's position, the higher the standard is required. We don't see the elevation of standard today. I'm sorry. I keep going back on that. And we need to pray for that. We need to pray for that change to occur. The book of James reveals that even teachers will be judged more harshly than others. James 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. The smallest mistake of our great leaders in the past, you know, were, were severely punished. Even Moses himself did not enter the land because he struck the rock instead of speaking to it as, as Adonai commanded. King Solomon understood this well. And because he did, he fervently prayed to God for wisdom to discern right from wrong in judging Israel. That's when he first came to power. He asked God for a heart that hears so he could distinguish between right and wrong for, for the people. Despite all the wisdom Adonai gave to Solomon, his downfall was that he didn't listen to the word of the Torah that forbids many wives. In the end, his many wives turned his heart away from Adonai to serve their foreign gods, as I had mentioned earlier. In order to make righteous judgments about people and situations in our life, we need to have a heart that both hears from Adonai and is willing to submit to the word of God. Judgment is a strong theme running through Parashat Shoftim. And Yeshua warned us to judge fairly fairly, without hypocrisy, and to get, examine ourselves first. In the end, however, Adonai alone is perfectly righteous and just. Only he can achieve that flawless balance between justice and mercy. Psalm 58 verse 11 says, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. We can be eternally grateful that through Yeshua's death on the cross, that we've escaped the judgment that we all righteous rightly deserve. Hallelujah for that. Thank you, Yeshua. We can be thankful that in Yeshua, mercy triumphs over judgment. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. And that is in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. So I also want to address uh, the difference between a judge and an officer um, when we talk about um, 
Moses instructing the nation of Israel to appoint judges and law enforcement officers to administer ju justice. Um, and these judges and officers would not only teach, but also interpret the laws of the Torah. A judge refers to one qualified to deliver judgments according to the laws of the Torah, and the officer then enforces these legal judgments even by force if necessary, as as is stated. Now, um, what is prophesied through Isaiah later on um, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26, he doesn't mention officers. He actually, the word is changed to counselors. He mentions the judges. The officers do not appear in this prophecy. I shall restore your judges at, at first and your counselors as at the beginning. So the counselors replace the, the role of officers. In the day of redemption, when the Messiah returns to rule and reign in righteousness, there will be no need for enforcers of the Torah. In the Messianic era, all will have such a deep desire to follow and obey the Lord that only counselors will be needed to explain and clarify not to enforce the decisions of the judges. Even today, before that great day of the Lord that is to come, those who are truly in Messiah do not need external coercion to keep God's commandments and judges. It's that great love for Yeshua and what he's done. For when we have been given a new heart and a new spirit, there arises within us a desire to keep God's laws and commandments, not in a spirit of legalism, but out of a heart of love. So no, the law didn't go away um, in, 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 that, in that aspect. We're, we're keeping it. Um, Yeshua said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what were, were his commandments? Think about that. For those who believe in Yeshua but do not observe his commandments in the Torah, the question we need to ask is why not? Either the person is not truly following Yeshua and filled with the Spirit, or they have received and accepted a teaching of false grace, which erroneously emphasizes freedom from guilt over freedom from sin. Yes, you must ask for forgiveness of sin. Yes, you must walk in righteousness. And yes, you must repent if you know you've sinned. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. Certainly, Yeshua did not pay the ultimate price to set us free from bondage to sin so that we can continue sinning without guilt. That is like hyper grace. I mean, yes, there is grace. Yes, there is mercy. But that doesn't give us that license to go out and do whatever we want to do. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. And that's in the New Testament, in the Brit Kadeshah, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. So don't get trapped into, to, into that hyper-grace gospel that's out there that is false. Um, so we need to really be careful of that. Also remember Yeshua died to take away our sins, not so we can go out and have a free for all and go out and do whatever it is we want to do because he died for us. He died once and for all, not for us to keep continuing to live in, live, live in a lawlessness uh, lifestyle and, and to continue to sin. No. And just to mention, justice has always been a fundamental value. Um, with our forefathers. Therefore, it, it was to be administered without corruption and difficult cases needed to be taken to the Levitical Kohanim. Again, there needed to be two or three witnesses, not one person's word against the other. This is why the trial of, of Yeshua was completely unjust and contrary to Jewish law even. And yet it was God's will for his son to suffer and die on the cross for us. Also, the occult was, was addressed um, in this week's parasha. And we are not to participate in this. Um, not even today. And really... It, it, is, it is very dangerous, actually, to, to engage in this stuff because 
you're actually getting familiar spirits, which are demonic. They're not, they're not the Holy Spirit. That's the only one that we should be consulting is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. No other types of spirits, because they could actually harm you. False prophets were also addressed. Killing murder was addressed. Accidental death. And the the cities of ref, refuge were addressed in this prayer shot as well. Also, uh, trusting in God for victory, God would go before the people, and and He had Moses address the people to not be afraid. He would go before them and hand them over to Him. Adonai was with His people. And um, we can also rest assured that no matter what battle we may face today, that Adonai is with us and will cause us to walk in triumph in Messiah Yeshua, as in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But thanks be to God, who in Messiah always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. We're going to read the Haftar portion now, Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 to chapter 52, verse 15. So essentially, we're going to do both um, chapter 51 and 52. Comfort Zion with justice. Listen to me, you who pursue justice, you who seek Adonai. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For when I called him, he was but one. Then I blessed him and multiplied him. For Adonai will comfort Zion. He will comfort all of her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden, her, des her desert like the garden of Adonai. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and a sound of melody. Pay attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation, for Torah will go out from me. My justice as a light to the peoples. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone out and my arms will judge the nations. The coastlands will wait for me. For my arm, they will wait expectantly. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness never wane. Listen to me, you who know justice, a people with my Torah in their heart. So here we are. That's a great parallel uh, to what we had just read in Torah. Do not fear the taunts of men, nor be dismayed at their insults. For the moth will eat them like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever, and my salvation for all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of Adonai, awake as in the days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the, the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a path for the redeemed to pass over? Now the ransomed of Adonai will return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will be upon their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, I am the one who comforts you. Who are you that you should fear man who dies, or a son of man who is given up like grass? But you forgot Adonai, your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. Are you in constant dread all day because of the fury of the oppressor? as he makes ready to destroy. But where is the fury of the oppressor? Soon one bowed down will be released. He will not die and go to the pit, nor will his bread be lacking. For I am Adonai, your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Adonai Sevaot is his name. I put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, you are my people. Awake, awake, stand up, Jerusalem. From Adonai's hand, you have drunk the cup of his fury, the chalice of railing that you have drained to the dregs. There is none to guide her among all the sons she has born, nor is there one to take her by the hand among all the sons she has raised. 
These two things have befallen you who will mourn for you devastation and destruction, famine and a sword. How will I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at every street corner like an antelope in a net. They are full of Adonai's fury, the rebuke of your God. Therefore, hear this, you who are afflicted, who are drunk but not with wine. Thus says your Lord, Adonai, your God, who defends his people. Behold, I have taken from your hand the cup of reeling, the bowl of my wrath. You will never drink it again. Then I will put it into the hand of your tormentors, who said to you, Lie down so we may walk over you. You have made your back like the ground and like a street for passers-by. And chapter 52, Ma Nabu, the song of salvation. Awake, awake, clothe yourself in your strength, lion. Clothe yourself in beautiful garments, Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean will never invade you again. Shake off the dust and arise. Be enthroned, Jerusalem. Loose the bonds off your neck, captive daughter of Zion. For thus says Adonai, you were sold for nothing, so you will be redeemed without silver. For thus says Adonai Elohim, at first my people went down to Egypt to reside there. Then the Assyrians oppressed them for nothing. Now, therefore, what do I have here? It is a declaration of Adonai. My people are taken away for nothing. It's rulers will. It is Adonai's declaration, and my name is continually blasphemed all day long. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day... I am the one who will be saying Hineni, meaning here, here am I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces Shalom, who brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, the voice of your watchmen. They will lift up their voices. Together they are shouting for joy, for they will see eye to eye when Adonai returns to Zion. Break forth in joy. Sing together your ruins, your ruins of Jerusalem. For Adonai has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Adonai has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Leave, leave, get out of there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out of her midst. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of Adonai, for you will not go out in haste, nor will you go in flight, for Adonai will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. The fourth servant song the Lamb. Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted, just as many were appalled at you. His appearance was disfigured more than any man. This is speaking of Yeshua. His form more than the sons of men. So he will sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what had not been told them, they will see. And what they had not heard, they will perceive. And that's the end of the half Torah portion. Just to quickly recap on the the Torah and the half Torah portion. This is where um, the Torah portion, Shoftim, Judges, Moses instructs the people of Israel to appoint judges and law enforcement officers in every city. Justice, justice, justice shall you pursue. He commands them and you must administer it without corruption or favoritism. Crimes must be meticulously investigated and evidence thoroughly examined a minim minimum of two credible witnesses, two or three, uh, was required for conviction and punishment. In every generation, says Moses, there will be those entrusted with the task of interpreting and applying the laws of the Torah according to the law that they will teach you and the judgment that they will instruct you, you shall do. You shall not turn away from the thing that they say to you, to the right nor to the left. Shoftim, Judges, also includes the prohibitions against idolatry and sorcery laws governing the appointment and behavior of a king and guidelines for the creation of cities of refuge for the inadvertent murderer, the accidental murderer, um, or, ma or manslayer. Also set forth are many other rules of war, the exemption from battle for one who has just built a home, planted a vineyard, married, or is afraid of soft and or is afraid and soft-hearted, the 
requirement to offer terms of peace before attacking a city and the prohibition against wanton destruction of something of value exemplified by the law that forbids to cut down a fruit tree when laying siege in this context the torah makes the famous statement for man is a tree of the field uh, the parashat concludes with the law uh, the special procedure to be followed when a person is killed by an, an unknown murderer and his body is found in a field, which underscores the responsibility of the community and its leaders not only for what they do, but also for what they might be prevented from being done. And I'm sorry, <laughs> I actually did miss that. And um, I had ended with... Uh, chapter 20 um chapter 21 says we're gonna we're gonna address this purging innocent blood suppose a slain person is found fallen in a field on the land adonai your god is giving you to possess who's who struck him is unknown then your elders and judges must come out and measure the distance to the towns that are around the slain one now the town nearest to the slain one the elders of that city are to take from the herd a heifer that has not been used for work or pull the yoke then the elders of that city are are to bring the heifer down to a flowing wadi that has not been plowed or sown and break the heifer's neck there in the wadi the kohanim the sons of, the, of levi will come forward for adonai your god has chosen them to serve him and pronounce blessings in his name and by their mouth every dispute and assault is to be settled all the elders of that city nearest to the slain one will wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken in the wadi then they will answer and say our hands did not shed this blood nor did our eyes see grant atonement for your people israel whom you have redeemed adonai and do not put innocent blood on your people israel then atonement will be granted for them for the blood so you will purge the guilt of innocent blood from your midst when you do what is right in Adonai's sight. And and we know, you know, the that was addressed, you know, the life of of all living beings is in the blood. The, you know, the animals, the people. Um, so it, that needed to be, you know, the innocent blood needed to be dealt with and, and atonement needed to be um, done for that individual that was found that was found. So I'm uh, sorry about that. I did miss that. <laughs> well, it happens. Um, so uh, ha the half to our portion um, is the fourth of a series of seven half to of consolation. We are um, reading these um, beginning. We began reading these on following Tishba of the Shabbat after Tishba of, and it continues until Rosh Hashanah. The half Torahs of the past two weeks open with Israel's complaint that they have been abandoned by Adonai and Israel is not con content with consolations offered by the prophets. Instead, they demand that, that Adonai alone comfort them. In, in response, this week's half Torah begins with Adonai's response. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, indeed, I will comfort you. After briefly reprimanding Israel for forgetting their creator for fear of human and finite oppressors, the prophet describes the suffering and tribulations which Israel has endured. However, the time has arrived for the suffering to end. The time has come for Israel's oppressors to drink the cup of suffering which they had hitherto forced Israel to drink. Awaken, awaken, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on the garments of your beauty, Jerusalem, the holy city, for no longer shall the uncircumcised or the unclean continue to enter you. Shake yourselves from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Free yourself of the bands of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Isaiah extols the beauty of the messenger who will announce the good tidings of redemption. Burst out in song. Sing together, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has consoled his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. And the Haftar ends by the highlighting the difference between the Egyptian exodus, exodus when the Israelites hurried out of their exile and bondage, and the future of redemption. For not, with, for not with, the, with haste shall you go forth, and not in a flurry of flight shall you go. For the Lord goes before you, and 
your rear guard is the God of Israel. And that is the end of the, the recapping of both the Torah and the half Torah. We're going to close this out with a closing prayer and take a break and then come back with the second segment of Shabbat. Father God, we thank you for this powerful word. We thank you that you are a God that doesn't change, and we can certainly look at what was an abomination to you then is still an abomination to you today. And it's very clear how you want your people to to live. It's very clear that you do not want us to uh, operate with corruption, with wickedness, with lawlessness, but to operate in righteousness and fairness and just and peace. We thank you for this. We love you, Father God. We give you honor, praise, and glory in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Take a short break and we'll come back with the second segment of Shabbat.